Welcome to Courageous Conversations with Lionheart Coaching Co., where we talk about the hard parts of our journey and the courage it can sometimes take to find our way back to ourselves. I'm your host, Mandy Woodard, and on this episode, we're going to talk about the ego, specifically the unhealed ego. I'm going to dive into human design and what the ego looks like from there. And then I'm also going to talk about healing your ego through Reiki. All right, let's get started. Hello. Happy day to you. I wanted to say happy Monday, but maybe you're not listening on a Monday. That's all right. Happy day to you. I'm excited about today's topic because, well, I think I'm always excited about my topics. (laughs) It's always something that is on my mind quite a bit, and I get really excited to share about it, which is why I have a podcast. Before I get started, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the coffee that's in my cup right now. Because my absolute favorite coffee roaster, Brandon with Cordial Coffee, is so kind to provide coffee for me when I'm recording my episodes and as well as for my guests when they join me. And he has this incredible wholesale program. So if you need locally roasted coffee delivered right to your doorstep, you should go to his website. It's cordialcoffee.com slash shop. And he even gave us a promo code. So if you use the code podcast, you'll get $5 off your first order. I very much love coffee. So it excites me greatly that Brandon is the sponsor for the show. (laughs) All right. Are we ready to talk about the ego now? I am ready to talk about the ego. I wanted to talk about the ego because it's brought up a lot And I think that there is a bit of a misconception around it. And I want to help shift that narrative and shift that conversation. I've learned a lot about the ego over the last couple years because we talk about it in human design. And then we also talk about it in Reiki. Reiki is my energy practice that I do. It is a Japanese technique for healing and relaxation, but furthermore, it is a clearing of your energy. And through Reiki, we can heal the ego. I believe we can heal the ego through human design as well, just by changing our understanding of it. So let me tell you what the ego is. First, I'm going to tell you that out of my Reiki book, straight out of my book from my master class, it is said that the ego is who we know ourselves to be. If you Google it, which I know we all tend to use the old Google for our information, (laughs) the definition is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. Okay, that's a fair, that's a fair definition. It's the part of the mind that meditates between the conscious and the unconscious and is responsible for reality testing and a sense of personal identity. Now, here's the thing around the ego. I think that there has been a lot of conditioning here. Especially when you see someone and they are super confident or have a lot of self-worth then they're looked at as if they are egotistical. Now, the definition of egotistical is excessively conceited or absorbed in oneself. I have a hard time with that because I feel like that is a judgment. That's not a fact. I mean, right? I, maybe I'm asking the question here. It, it doesn't feel fair to label people as egotistical, though, to me. For me, 
if you see someone and you can see that they are putting themselves first and they are not caring about other people and they are constantly denying responsibility and never apologizing, that is maybe more so unhealed ego. So as I'm talking this out right now, To me, it feels like we need to remove the word egotistical and stop judging and start noting when we see an unhealed ego, which I guess, honestly, is also a judgment. (laughs) Truthfully, though, everyone operates either in alignment or out of alignment with their true authentic self. And if someone is operating out of alignment And they're making choices that seem like they can never be wrong, then that is an unhealed ego, which means there's a wound there and that needs to be healed. There are a lot of similarities, though, in talk about the ego with human design and Reiki in the way that it's viewed. So I'm going to dive into human design real quick. And by the way, just a quick overview on human design. Human design is something that I use in my practice when I'm helping my clients learn who they are. It is a blueprint of your aura. It's pretty phenomenal. If you don't know what your human design is, I do have an option to get a reading from me. And if you're listening to this today, just a quick little plug here, because I want to do this. It's Cyber Monday. If you're listening today, the day that this releases, then I'm going to give you a code at the end of this episode to get a discount on a reading with me. So stick around for that. But I'm talking about human design. It's a blueprint to your aura. That's the basic understanding. We take your birth time and your location and your date And we put it into a system and it gives me your design. So everyone has an ego center. This is an energy center. We have many of them. And in your chart, it is either colored in or it's white. So either defined or undefined. And no matter what, this is the source of your self-confidence, your willpower, your self-esteem, So for an example, someone who can walk into a room and have this extreme amount of confidence in what they're doing, chances are they have a defined heart and they are operating in alignment with themselves. But because of society and the view that we have on it, they are actually looked at like they are stuck up or a snob. So often people struggle with confidence, by the way. And it's because of that. People are afraid to be confident because they don't want to come off arrogant or egotistical. This is why I want to shift the conversation around this. Because I want you to be confident. I want you to be able to know that it's okay to walk into a room and say, hey, I know what I'm talking about. And this is why I say all the time, it's not death of the ego. It's heal the ego. We got to heal this conversation around the ego. We've got to heal our own egos because there is so much value in a healed ego. There is value in high levels of confidence. That's why instead we should be focusing on healing. And you will always hear me say that. I will always say that about pretty much anything. We must focus on healing. We must focus on what we can do now. What can we do right now? now. And that doesn't matter what we're talking about. But those parts that are deemed bad, those are just unhealed. But what's unhealed can, in fact, be healed. One of the biggest reasons why I think it's important that we change the conversation around this is that we want people with strong egos leading this world. We want a doctor with a strong ego walking into the room with the confidence to heal a heart. If he's about to walk in and perform surgery, you want him to be confident. I want to walk into a room where my client is sitting and have this confidence 
that I can help them. Now, if I was operating with an unhealed ego, then that could look like me feeling like I could just save and rescue everyone, which is not even realistic. <laughs> it would almost be like I'm your savior here to take care of you and, and rescue you. That's out of alignment. That's unhealed ego. Okay, so in human design, there's healthy versus unhealthy. And that goes for whether it's defined or undefined. So if you have a defined ego center, healthy traits are having a powerful ego, being able to make commitments and then sticking with them, having an inherent sense of self-worth, having a natural sense of self-esteem, handling the competitive field by exerting your willpower or not, meaning knowing when to and when not to be competitive, thriving on the material plane, knowing that you are here to work, but with the goal of making enough so that you don't have to. Now, if you have a defined ego, but you're operating in an unhealthy way, then you might be endangering distrust in others if you shy away from making a promise. You might become ill if you allow your willpower to be controlled or suppressed by someone else. Now, this is huge and I want to sidebar on this because so often sickness starts on an energetic level and that goes for many different aspects of our centers in our body and who we are. And I don't want to get too deep into human design, but I do want to say this. Anytime you are not listening to your intuition or you are not operating in alignment with yourself, you are risking illness in your body. But when you start to feel that, when you feel that your body is off, that's when you should be stopping and getting curious and listening to what it is that's coming up for you. So if you are being controlled or suppressed by someone else, and you have this defined heart in your human design chart, know that that's a sign and you need to listen and pay attention to that. You could lose trust of the community if you overvalue your own importance. Now, let's talk about this. If you overvalue your own importance, this is where the doctor that walks into the room, overly confident believing he can do something that actually he deep down knows that he can't, that's when he's damaging trust. And that's also unhealed ego. Walking into a room with a healthy ego, being confident to do your job and knowing at your core that you can, that is operating in alignment and with a healthy ego. So next time you see someone over-promising, under-delivering, that's unhealed. That's an unhealed ego. Okay, sticking with human design for a minute here. I want to talk about what's healthy versus unhealthy if you do not have this defined in your chart. Having it undefined doesn't mean that you can't have this confidence or this self esteem. It just means you don't have consistent energy in this energy center on your blueprint. There's also more room for conditioning here. So here are things that you should know if you have an undefined heart in your chart. Knowing not to make promises because you have to be able to have this flexibility and the ability to change your mind. That is a healthy trait. Another healthy trait, having a healthy sense of self-worth and worthiness. Having no need to prove oneself. Having wisdom about who can make commitments and promises and fulfilling material demands. Unhealthy traits are going to be making promises you cannot keep, feeling unworthy and undervalued, being insecure in the material world, having a hard time charging money or putting value on yourself, or trying to overachieve in life by sheer force of will, driven by your lack of self-worth. Believing you are competitive and therefore damaging your heart and stomach and shying away from competition for fear of losing. So hearing all of that and then getting this understanding of who you are, finding your way to your authentic self, that 
is how you heal your ego, no matter defined or undefined. So you have to create this strong connection to your authentic self. And in order to do that, we have to go through this process of deconditioning. Because we're all conditioned by our parents, our school we went to, the world we live in, the society in general. And the sooner you are aware of this, the sooner you can start shedding these layers. What is truly you? What beliefs are yours? There is this awakening process, and this is where you might experience that dark night of the soul. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you might want to go listen to the hard parts episode, because I talked about that quite a bit. So here's the thing. Not everybody is going to be on board with this info. It's okay. We all embark on our own healing journey in perfectly divine timing. But if that is where you are, then you are picking up what I'm putting down here. (laughs) Then getting this basic understanding of who you are, your authentic self, is what's going to allow you to start to heal. And I like to tie human design into this and share the healthy versus unhealthy traits because when you are operating in a way that is not in alignment and it's an unhealthy trait, You are not only affecting yourself, you are affecting the people around you. And this is a really hard truth, but it really needs to be said. When you don't take the time to heal, you are affecting the people closest to you, the people that you love the most. It really is why I feel so strongly about this healing journey I see where when I was in that unhealed state, I was impacting my husband and my kids. And it's true for any center in your body graph. And how it looks from the ego center is going to be different from how it looks from the emotional center. But from the ego center, someone with this undefined in their chart and operating out of alignment with their true self might cause them to spend their entire life trying to prove themselves and prove that they are worthy. And in that process, they unknowingly make the people that they love the most feel like they are not worthy. Because how we feel is how we will ultimately make someone else feel, even if it's on a subconscious level. So think about it like this. Maybe you're jealous. You feel jealous. So what do you do? You want to make the other person feel jealous. Maybe you don't feel confident in yourself and who you are. So whenever you see someone who is confident, you get super triggered. I want you to really think about this and maybe reflect on some of your experiences. When have you been made feel a certain way based off someone else's actions And can you see where they were maybe operating with an unhealed ego and projecting that on to you? And then on the other side of that, when have you done this to somebody else because of your unhealed ego? That is why it is so important to start a healing journey and get to the core of who you are, your true authentic self. And get where you are operating with healthy traits versus unhealthy traits. Because you are affecting more than just yourself. I've been thinking so much about that butterfly effect. And just as we don't want someone else who is unhealed to hurt us, I know deep down you don't want to hurt other people either. And I have to throw this in here because I don't want you to feel guilty or bad Or judge yourself if you haven't begun any type of self-reflection or healing. Because it all is presented to us in divine timing. So if you're hearing this now for the first time and you just are getting turned on to the idea of a healing journey or a self-discovery journey, then all in perfect timing. It is your time now. It really is never too late to start this journey of self-discovery. But once you know, once you know this information, it is 
your job to act on it. And it can take time. The awakening process, that dark night of the soul, it's not always roses and realizations. Sometimes it is storms and lots of crying, lots of emotions. But what can you do to get more aligned with who you are? What are some things that you can do to start shedding those layers? Because that is the process. That is the journey, is this outer shell, this outer exterior shell that has hardened all around you. You get to chip away at it. And it's as that falls away, you get to that true inner authentic version of you versus the culturally created version, the version that was created by your parents or your life experiences and the world around you. So I've talked about human design and that ego center and that we have to go through that process of deconditioning. But now I want to talk a little more about how to heal the ego through Reiki. And I want to share that with Reiki, the ego's true purpose when healed is to be an expression of our divine nature on earth and to help us to accomplish our spiritual purpose in the material world. So healing that ego through Reiki is what's going to help lead us to our divine purpose. And it's very simple, actually. And even though everything seems like it has to be so damn complicated, I mean, the deconditioning process is not an easy one. But that's why I love Reiki so much, because it is simple. So when you heal through Reiki, it's really just a matter of receiving Reiki, either through self-Reiki, if you know how to do Reiki on yourself, or by receiving from someone else. Clearing that energy, getting back to your authentic self, getting away from that culturally created version of you. We can do that in Reiki just by practicing. And that's why I love it so much. And that's why I love being able to offer that to my clients. So I hope that everything I've said today has resonated I know I talked a good bit about human design, and then I talked about Reiki. I just want you to know, though, that it all connects. It all comes back together. And it all comes down to one thing, which is healing. So wherever you are on your journey, I want to just send you some love. (laughs) Maybe you're just waking up to the idea of finding your authentic self and beginning this journey of self-discovery, or maybe you've been on it for a while. No matter where you are, it's okay. And I can't stress that enough. I think it's really important that I say on repeat, I don't care how many times you hear me say this, it's never too late. It's never too late to start that healing journey. Because like I said, It isn't always just for us. It's for the people that are closest to us and even the people that we might just meet on the streets. And if you need to go back and clean some messes up because the unhealed version of you maybe wasn't so kind to people, do that. Go back and clean it up. We all make mistakes, but it's a matter of owning them, not having that denial of responsibility. And that denial of responsibility is a huge part of an unhealed ego. Okay, before I close this out, let me give you this code. So if you're listening to this on Monday the 28th or Tuesday the 29th, that's only how long this will be up for, you can get $10 off of your human design reading with me. Just use the code healed ego. And these readings are really cool. I do it via Zoom. There are recordings. So you'll purchase it and then I will get that together for you. And what I do is I screen share your body graph and talk you through it. 
That way you can listen to it over and over again and you can take notes if you need to. But it is so helpful. It really is. It's why I use it so much in my practice. And if you are really curious about your energetic blueprint, then I highly, highly recommend it. All right, my friend, I want you to know that I am so incredibly grateful for you and you are very much appreciated and you are loved and you are worthy and all of the things. So thank you for being here and until next time. Bye now.